So, so welcome to the LVG's weekly conversation. I'm here with, uh, as I was just instructed, Deanna Galbraith. Um, and uh, he is going to be one of the showcases at Electronicon next week, which is a, a pretty uh, cool science-related uh, uh, display at the Orlando Science Center. So, Deanna, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about you know your company, Capital Light Studios, and and a little bit about the game that you're building, and we'll kind of take it from there. Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Deanna Galbraith, and I'm the founder and creative director at Capital Light. And we focus a lot on um, like making story-driven uh, games. And we're going to be showing off Path of Kami, which is a game about a wolf and uh, his mother on a journey to the spirit world. Why we kind of created our studio, like we all, a lot of the team members were inspired by a game called Journey and, and art mm -hmm. games and games that really like give you the feels, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess, yeah. uh, when you're playing them. And um, yeah, that's what we kind of want to do with this game. like have people be able to feel like all kinds of different feelings and be really immersed and like really atmospheric. Uh, mostly like the game feel like it was really relaxing. Like you could sit down and like, there was there weren't really any moments where you're like, uh, of like urgency or panic or, or anything like that. Like it's really just sit down, play a game. You might have somebody like come by and like help you on your journey. Um, yeah, we kind of want to capture like that feel where you're just kind of relaxing and sitting in a game and kind of enjoying the the story and the environments. Well, see, it was interesting because I, I've been a gamer for a while and, um, you know, to me, Journey was one of the games that almost, I don't want to say it was an evolution of gaming, but it was, it was almost to me, maybe it wasn't the one, but it was almost an example of how games have evolved, especially in today's world where everybody's playing them, right? That we, We'll talk about the pandemic in a bit, I promise you. But I just mean, even before, even before that, more people were trying trying out different kinds of games and trying to experiment a little bit. Can you talk to me a little bit about just your thoughts on, you know, the evolution of games from, you know, the, the old button mashers to now uh, real thinkers, if you will? Yeah, I think um, we really learned that games really affect like uh, a lot of our lives like and, and you can gamify a lot of things too like it mm -hmm. we have like our you know our regular games and then we have like gamified games and education games um mm -hmm. but yeah we could i think we, a lot of research has been done on like how games can affect people's emotions um and like mental state and stuff so i feel like there's been a lot of um games especially recently like ooblets being a good example of like mm -hmm. this like wholesome game genre that's um, becoming really popular. Tell me a little bit about Path of Kami. Yeah, it's um, about a wolf where you're, uh, or a wolf's journey, he like passes away in a snowstorm and you kind of wake up as a spirit and he's like not really sure what happened and he's greeted by this wisp who says it's his, it's his mother and they have to travel to the spirit world in order to, uh, to ascend uh, pretty much. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a life and death type type of theme um and then, yeah you just learn about um the relationship between him and his mother and what it was like when he was alive and there's uh then do kind of like a bit of it's japanese state yeah it's japanese based right, right. um so you learn a lot about um kind of it like different gods and spirits and stuff uh, in in the path of kami world yeah, we kind of want to do um, a large focus on environmental storytelling. So maybe okay. not directly telling everything to the player, um, but by being attentive and, and maybe looking at like carvings and the environment and stuff, you'll be able to tell um, mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of the story. But we'll also be telling the the player the story through the conversations uh, with the wisp. Well, it sounds it sounds fascinating. How long have you guys been working on this game? And, and and you know, this is this is the granular question I like to get to because I'm not a game developer, but I do love video games. How did you kind of center on this wolf, right? Of of all of all characters, I imagine there's a spiritual connection there between uh, you know wolves and and I know that in, in some uh, uh, cultures it's it's a it's a big it's a big figure. But how did you guys settle on this, or is that was it just this? We like wolves. <laughs> Uh, part of it was like we like wolves, but um, yeah. I think uh, originally when we were going through the design phase, um, I have a dog named Boots, um, mm. 
and a lot of us have like pets and stuff. So we were thinking, oh, like maybe maybe some type of dog or, or, or cat type of animal. Um, and we thought maybe like a wolf would fit <clears throat> because uh, I think the Japanese wolf is actually extinct. And with the story of them being, um, uh, you know, passing away and then going through the journey to the afterlife uh, kind of fit that a bit. Um, so my background has always been in, in game design and in game marketing. I, I was really lucky, like while I was studying at UCF um, for game design, I uh, worked with Kyle and and Bobby from Tuesday Tune doing game design and like marketing work. And then I also worked with like a indie game publisher, learned a lot from that and was doing that for throughout like my school uh, at UCF. And then once I graduated, I, um, took a little short break and then I, I studied at SCAD online for, um, mm -hmm. for my master's and yep, still working at 3 and 2 and, and that indie game publisher. So I'm still learning and, and going. And were then- you uh, Were you a gamer growing up? Yeah, actually my mom was a gamer and that's what got me into, <laughs> into games. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what, kind of, what kind of games? Yeah. Uh, she loved like the Tomb Raider series. Like that was her, that was her thing. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, how about you? Like what, what games got you into, into the, the gaming scene or into playing games? Yeah, I'd say like Spyro, Jack and Daxter were nice. like my tops. And then gosh, I, I can't remember which Digimon game it was, but it was uh, an arena game, Digimon. And me and my sister used to play that all the time. Um, <laughs> And then when I played Journey, I was like, holy cow, like this is super different from right. uh, most of the games I've been playing. I want to make games like this. And that's kind of where uh, that went off. No, that's awesome. No, because that, that's exactly like how, how I've heard other, other people say, not necessarily Journey, but there's always like that one game that kind of really hooked them. It, it made them go from like, I love this game to I want to make this game. I think that that's. That's a huge flip. I never got to that. Flip. I just like playing them. I can't make anything. So, um, <laughs> but um, but yeah. I mean, you look you look at some of the games you you play. I mean, I mean, is it? This is my whole. This is my like fanboy type question, right? And this, this is, I try to ask this of everybody. What is it like? I mean, as someone who played games and now whose mother played games, right? To know that you're kind of creating this and you're you're making games now instead of. Um, uh, just playing and, and playing other people's experiences. What's what kind of like what kind of, of energy goes into making the game? That, that I mean, do you have the, in mind like how you react to games when you start playing? I mean, what, can you give me that a little bit? Yeah, I'd say when reacting to games before doing game development, it was always like kind of awe inspiring to see like all of the art and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then once I started learning about game design and game development, I was like, oh my God, like so much stuff <laughs> goes <laughs> into games. Like this door that's right here probably went through a bunch of UX and design and then sound effect and then implementing with programming and all this other stuff for just the door. <laughs> so right, right. it was really mind blowing. <laughs> well, there's one last thing I want to ask you about and um, that's girls in gaming. Um, I think there's a, there's oh, yeah. a there's been a lot. There's been a lot of uh, you know uh, news out there. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more people on platforms like Twitter and Twitch and and and, and uh, you know that are advocating very strongly for women and gaming for girls and gaming. But you still have those toxic assholes, frankly, <laughs> um, that are not so accepting. I mean, what is that like? I imagine. That, is, is there a different level of that as someone who's building a game? And secondly, I mean, just give me your thoughts on, on that and how that's come. I feel it's better, but that's not for me to judge, right? That's, uh, so what do you, do you think it's improving? Yeah, I think it's improving. I think like companies uh, have definitely been working harder like to mm -hmm. you know diversify the workplace. And uh, I think Riot Games is a really good example mm -hmm. um, of like trying you know, with everything that happened and um, and everything, they have like a lot of initiatives, EA has a lot of initiatives. Um, and then there's like really lots of organizations that are really um, wanting to, su to support, you know, th making things better, like Girls Make Games and Girls right. Who Code and all these other amazing organizations 
I know um, as a studio, like Capitalize really uh, focused on uh, having like just a diff diversified team mm -hmm. and making sure we're inclusive and, and all of that too. Is it, is it, um, are you encouraged by where we are compared to where we were literally, literally just one year ago, two years ago, it was, it was, it was a lot worse than I think than it is now. But again, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm really encouraged, really hopeful. Uh, I know just through my time at school, like I noticed so much change. Um, I think like going to my first game design class, I, it was maybe only like me and like maybe two mm -hmm. other girls in the class. Um, yeah. But going to SCAD and towards it, my end of my year in UCF, like I was, you know, seeing more girls um, in the students, but also in the professors and stuff. So mm -hmm. def definitely hopeful. Did you ever face something like that? Did you ever face anything like that directly as far as uh, maybe not uh, discrimination? Because obviously a lot a lot of it's just online chatter. But do you ever, did you ever run into something like that where um, you just doubted because of your gender? Um, I have come across some situations like that. Um, I think like when I was starting school, for example, like I remember a professor telling me I, I wouldn't fit uh, <laughs> A game modeling class that they were offering and i was like what <laughs> I was like, okay uh, sure but yeah there's um yeah it happens unfortunately but i did definitely getting better how do you um you know i'm not i'm not trying to take you to a place you don't want to go so do apologize if that's what it seems like but like oh no yeah how do you uh kind of deal with that i mean obviously now you're you're, you're building a studio um and and but when it when it happened like how did how do you deal with that other than kind of just pushing through and kind of using it as a I'll show you type of thing? I mean, like, what, 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 how did you do it? Yeah, I think uh, I think I've seen a lot of people on uh, on Twitter joke about it, but they're like, oh, I'm, I think I'm only in this industry now through spite. <laughs> um, and it's kind of and it's kind of that um, yeah. that and just like. I, you know, I want to make games. I'm not going to let like uh, comments like that stop me. And there's other people that are passionate about making the same games like I want to make and all of that good stuff. So it's kind of just focusing my energy on on that and the positive side of things.